I'm here on the floor of the Traders Expo, and my guest today is Corey Rosenblum, and we're talking about risk on and risk off, and what those terms mean to you as a trader. So Corey, let's define that first. We hear that term all the time on TV and on articles, on, on even on moneyshow.com. What do we mean by risk on or risk off? Sure, Tim. Let's start with risk on, because that's more enjoyable to talk about. We like when markets rise. So risk on markets would be ones that we would call bullish, or a case of when the people want to put on risk to make money. The risk, we think of it in terms of losing money, but one puts on risk to make money. So things that rise and, and with good news. So risk on markets would be defined as stocks in general. They are more risky than the opposite market, which would be bonds, or an op opposing market, which is bonds. That's risk off. If you are bullish about the future, you might put more money as an investor into the stock market. If you are bearish about the future, you'll probably put, or you need to at least, put money into bonds. That's a risk off. But it goes beyond that. Traders, funds, hedge funds use multiple markets for cross markets, movements, hedging strategies, or just opportunity management to mitigate risk. So what they do is look at different market structures or different markets themselves. So for example, again, the simplest is stocks risk on, bonds risk off. But commodities count with the risk on markets. For example, crude oil, gold, silver. Those are also sensitive to, to economic conditions. When economic conditions improve, those markets rally as well. So we consider commodities in general as risk on. The opposite will be true about the dollar index. It tends to be a safety play. The US government is safe, and people see the dollar as a safety play. It's often called a safety hedge. So when periods of market turmoil, especially in the markets of 2008 historically, really the only market that did well was the dollar index. Now bonds actually rallied later in terms of the crash in the August, uh, September period. But in terms of risk off, we're looking at that. So in general, for definition, we are looking for stocks, commodities, and maybe the Euro to be a risk on style market and risk off would be safety or protection. Things you go for for a hedge, which would be bonds, maybe the US dollar or other th markets that are less volatile that are not as quote risky. All right, so if I hear that it's a risk on environment, does that necessarily mean I should be in stocks or if it's risk off, I should avoid stocks or is it just something to keep in mind while I'm trading? It's to keep in mind, but it, it depends on your style. If you are an investor, these things, we go risk on and risk off sometimes on a day to day basis. And that's very confusing for longer term investors. Most of the time, a risk on procedure would last for a few weeks, maybe a month. For intraday traders, it is far more important to look at these markets on this sort of basis. And there's even, we would call a thesis, the one market thesis, where all these markets have, have approached higher correlations of movement together. In the past, 10 years ago, even more than that, these markets were a little, little bit more, they were different, they were more divergent. You did not have these things where risk on markets all moved higher as an intraday or maybe a day-to-day -day or weekly basis as you have today. And so as, for an intraday trader, yes, it is very important to be able to understand what risk on means, how to look at charts on higher frames, and what this really means about what funds move into risk management and when they shift from a more, I don't want to say the word fearful, but a protective, a protective environment that will be risk off. What about the VIX? I know VIX has always talked about that as the fear indicator. Does that have a, a, something to do with risk on or risk off? To an extent, yes. And traders actually can use that. It's not so much a market like commodities or stocks, but it's a volatility index that now can be traded with ETFs or with futures. And so people can use that as their own hedge. For example, if they're in a market for a longer term portfolio with uh, good stocks for the long term, but they expect a period of maybe a month to a month and a half or even longer or even shorter in this kind of environment, they may trade the VIX options because the VIX will rally. It being a fear index, it's based on option premium. So the general index will rise as the market falls. As premium, as fear enters, or as hedging takes place, option premium goes up, therefore the volatility index goes up. And that's correlated to markets and we, how markets fall faster than they rise. People tend to be much more fearful quicker and at the same time. It's more emotional when the markets plunge. Therefore volatility can rise much more quickly when it falls. Markets tend to rise, there's a saying we as traders say, the markets take the escalator up or the stairs up and the elevator down. That ties into risk management, risk on, risk off. It is much more likely to have a sudden surge to risk off assets than it is to surge quickly, powerfully, impulsively into yeah, risk on. Corey, thanks for your time. Thank you, Tim. You're watching the moneyshow.com video network.